Have you ever stopped to think how magnetic recording affects your life every day? Probably not. The Mojo has. Magnetic recording has caused a musical revolution around the world. Dr. Donald Walter has. Magnetic recording is helping him discover the secrets of the brain. Entertainers have. Magnetic recording has constantly and dramatically improved the world of radio and television. Sports fans have. Magnetic recording has created a visual excitement for almost every major sport. Astronaut Michael Collins has. Magnetic recording helped make his moon flight possible. Throughout the world, in science, medicine, education, industry, and entertainment, magnetic recording is an increasingly important part of our lives. Here, for the first time, is this remarkable story. The basic principles of magnetic recording were known late in the 1890s, but they were not made practical for nearly half a century. During World War II, German engineers produced a magnetic audio recorder called a magnetophone. After the war, these magnetophones were studied and improved upon in the United States. In 1948, engineers at Ampex, then a small company located near San Francisco, achieved a major breakthrough in magnetic recording with the first practical tape recorder for professional use in radio. I wouldn't know where to look for it, dearie. Oh, I know where it is. It's right here in the hall clock. Oh, no, no. I gotta straighten out that closet one of these days. In 1948, radio was in its golden age. Most network radio programs were broadcast live. However, one of the biggest shows of the time, Bing Crosby's Philco Hour, was recorded on discs, electrical transcriptions. But the quality of the discs was not acceptable, and Bing decided to try the new tape recorders. When I heard the results of this recording, I was astounded by the quality. Of course, there was some of the usual official skepticism and resistance to the new method. But after one or two more experimental tape recordings, the discs were abandoned. In retrospect, I realize we launched an entirely new industry, an era of magnetic recording. Magnetic recording, how does it work? Well now, most of you have seen a typical recording device, such as this home recorder. Basically, it works like this. Sound, as we all know, consists of vibrations transmitted in waves through the air. A microphone translates these sound waves to an electric current. This varies in its form as the sound varies. This electric current is passed along to an electromagnet, where it becomes a varying magnetic field. A gap in one part of the magnet allows the magnetic field to spill out of the magnet. This magnet is called a recording head. A tape coated with iron oxide particles passes this gap in the magnet. The oxide particles are magnetized in distinctive, invisible patterns which correspond to the changing magnetic field. And there you have the recording process. Now to play back a recording, another electromagnet reads the patterns recorded on the tape and translates them back to an electric current. The current is amplified and passed through a loudspeaker, which converts it back to sound waves, which are the same as the original sound. Only louder! Or softer. Because of the dramatic success that Crosby achieved with the Ampex recorders, the radio industry was transformed overnight by magnetic tape. The demand for tape recorders rapidly grew. The editing of discs had taken days, and the discs had to be discarded after one use. Now, editing time had been reduced to a matter of hours, and the tape could be used again and again. And problems of national time delay were now solved. In the recorded music field, magnetic recording offered far better quality than the wax masters used before. People were given an entirely new range of musical experiences. 
1956, Ampex produced the world's first stereo music system, a two-channel tape recorder player. And as sophisticated recording equipment was developed for radio networks and for the record industry, so low-cost magnetic tape machines were made available for schools and homes. And now, tape cartridges and cassettes make music convenient anywhere. Today, more people are buying tape recorders than phonographs. And even the methods of recording have been radically changed. Performers can now record in 16 or even as many as 24 different soundtracks, then mix and blend it to create exciting new sounds. It didn't take long for science to make use of this new magnetic recording. As with radio and with music, tape would also make a major contribution to the precise world of instrumentation. Instrumentation recording is the recording of measurements and test information. In conducting research or designing a new product, whether it be an automobile, an airplane, or a rocket to the moon, countless measurements must be made, speed and temperature changes, stresses and strain. Instrumentation recording first took hold in aircraft testing. More test information may be gathered magnetically on a single flight of the giant 747 than was recorded on hundreds of test flights of the World War II B-17. Early test pilots had to write down readings of instruments aboard the aircraft. This was inefficient and dangerous. Magnetic instrumentation recorders, either aboard the plane or on the ground, gather information on temperature changes, vibrations, and structural stresses and movements. Hundreds of tests are performed in the 747 on a single flight for later detailed analysis, greatly speeding development efforts. Medical science has also turned to instrumentation recording. For example, at UCLA's medical school, Dr. Donald Walter uses magnetic recording to probe brain waves of children affected by schizophrenia. We're trying to understand uh, whether there's anything special about their brain waves. I can show you some of them on the tape here. We're trying to understand whether the brain waves are distinctive when they're performing a distinctive kind of behavior that expresses a little bit of their schizophrenia. Four, three, two, one. Zero. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. 32 minutes past the hour. Liftoff on Apollo 11. The most dramatic achievement of instrumentation recording has been in space. Located at tracking stations around the world, instrumentation recorders have gathered and stored detailed records of each step in man's greatest adventure. Information radioed to Earth constantly throughout each flight. One Bravo. We use... Uh magnetic recording for our entire history as we go through a manned space flight. Everything that we do virtually is recorded on magnetic tape as well as on magnetic drums and magnetic computer memories and magnetic discs. And we use this for both permanent and temporary history. They record uh, on these recorders biomed information which are the heart rate and uh, respiration rate for the astronauts. When we're back at the moon, uh, we are not able to communicate with the spacecraft and therefore we are, n are not able to see the telemetry uh, as things are occurring so that when they come around the other side of the moon, we will play that tape recorder back and the flight controllers then have sort of a history of what went on during the times that they weren't able to, to uh, see it directly. Okay, 
Each step into space has been taken on a foundation of information recorded during previous missions. Information analyzed efficiently and exhaustively. A collection of data unparalleled in history. Without magnetic recording, our capability to comprehend this information would be sorely limited and the moon would remain out of reach. And magnetic recording is also playing a vital role in the emergence of the computer. Man has acquired more knowledge in recent decades than in all prior history, and the computer has become the indispensable tool for using it efficiently. Magnetic recording in several forms provides the memory for the modern computer. Information is stored magnetically on tape, discs, drums, and tiny metallic rings ready for calculation. Billions of items can be recorded in these memories and called on at speeds measured in billionths of seconds. The fastest kind of computer memory in wide use is called a core memory. A core is a tiny ring of metallic material, perhaps a fiftieth of an inch in diameter, that may be magnetized in one direction or another to store a unit of computer information. Hair-like wires join the cores to magnetize them and to read their information. Millions of magnetic cores, individually wired by hand, may be contained in a single core memory. Computer technology is not restricted to office use. Crews of Mandrell Industries use magnetic recording to detect underground formations where oil may be found. These recordings may be converted to computer tapes in remote areas and rushed to nearby centers for computer analysis. The computer greatly increases the speed and the accuracy of the search. Schools of the future will use computers for individual student instruction. The student may, in effect, talk to the computer and learn at his own pace. And the teacher will have more time for individual attention. television that magnetic recording has had perhaps the most widespread effect on our daily lives. The television industry, in its infancy in the early 1950s, was suffering from many of the same problems which had plagued radio a decade before. Television networks had to rely on films called kinescopes for delayed transcriptions. Frequently, the quality of these early kinnies was marginal. Now here he is, your Toast of the Town host, the nationally famous newspaper man, Ed Sullivan. And processing film took time. Often the West Coast would receive a program a week after its origination on the East Coast. In 1956, engineers at Ampex developed a magnetic recorder that would record both pictures and sound on a single reel of tape. Pictures that looked like a live broadcast and could be replayed immediately without processing. This amazing device gave new vigor to television and became essential to television broadcasting the world over. CBS presents this program in color. A few years later, Ampex developed the high band color videotape recorder, a vital ingredient for the success of color broadcasting. Tonight, from the Ed Sullivan Theater on Broadway, The Ed Sullivan Show. And now, live from New York, Ed Sullivan. For these critical developments in videotape recording, Ampex has received two Emmys from the National Academy of Television Arts and Sciences. Most programs seen today are on videotape. Videotape is used increasingly to produce and edit programs. Laughing was developed as a show to take advantage of all of the new processes that are uh, uh, now at our disposal, you know. Uh, but uh, certainly the, the use and the development of videotape uh, has given us the immediacy to be able to do it. And more importantly, now the sophistication of the use of videotape, uh, as far as the new slow motion things that are available and speed up motion and uh, uh, you do animation and all of that, uh, to where you have the immediacy of television, but the flexibility of uh, the film in the way that you can edit it together. Very interesting. <laughs> Think about it. 
Other dramatic breakthroughs follow, most popular of which is instant replay, which uses a disc rather than tape for rapid replay of TV action. That was Mike's first pass. I think this is an interesting statistic. It'll box it again in the split screen. Phipps throwing a little hook pattern. And he wanted to be sure that he got the first down. And the on-field close-up camera. At the 1968 Olympics, broadcast to over 800 million people around the world, more than 50 video recorders of various kinds were used, including the ubiquitous instant replay recorder. 2.9, the height, difficulty back to dive the river. Look at that one. Let's take a look at this. Look at this. Look at the height he gets on this, and a very compact twist. This is Pete's best dive, always has been. Kind of relies on it. There he goes, twisting around. Beautiful pirouette. And now he's going to come around and square for the water. There it is. And real perpendicular. Nice stretch. And Q. Radio camera Q. Today, closed circuit television is changing the methods of instruction in business, science, medicine, education, and industry. And one, two, three, four. So you get too far to the right of her. You see? You should be more over to the left. That's it, so we are there. You drop the racket head on that one. Keep your racket head above the level of the wrist. Okay, that's it, that's it. Good. Bend your elbow. Computers and videotape recording combine in the Ampex video file system, which files documents by television. Southern Pacific Railroad can now store 20 million freight waybills on videotape in one-eighth the space previously required and views individual file entries in seconds electronically. filing records that have to do with the movement of freight traffic uh, and all its related documents. This runs in the neighborhood of uh, 350 to 400,000 documents a month. So this points up the uh, need for a fast, efficient way of storing documents. When you have clerks doing this and arranging them uh, by hand in a manual form, uh, and with the documents flowing in day after day, it might, there might be a gap of uh, one to two months before the records are available. Under a, this system, or this type of system of filing, the records are available immediately due to the fact that we have random access, random filing, without any need for sorting. Up to 200,000 documents can be stored on a single reel of videotape and a particular document can be moved, deleted, or updated with a touch of a button. The video file system has been adopted by the Sheriff's Department of Los Angeles County to automate the handling of more than 18 million law enforcement documents. Well, it'll provide us with the most efficient and the most advanced uh, system of record keeping in, the, in law enforcement. First of all, we don't have enough space to house all of our records. And this will reduce that by at least uh, uh, one-tenth of the space that's necessary. And then we're just being smothered with paperwork and with uh, too great a delay in getting the answers that we need for our people out in the field to successfully perform their duties. It'll reduce, uh, it'll reduce time uh, for retrieving cases. It'll increase the speed of uh, identification of suspects. and. Uh, enable us to provide the citizens in this community with a uh, far better service and a more economical service. Better service and more economical service. Magnetic recording. This movie has been made with videotape, except for historical pictures, and electronically edited, using the newest portable and studio equipment. Okay, we'll go from there into the reprise montage and to the closing credits. Okay, let's do it.
In less than 25 years, magnetic recording has created a series of revolutions in the way we do things. Revolutions that have made knowledge more manageable, leisure time more satisfying, and great scientific achievements possible. And pioneer companies in the field, like Ampex, say we have only begun to use the full capabilities of the many miracles of magnetic recording.